very good afternoon, one and all. How's everyone this afternoon? Great. I'm here to talk to you about uh, neuromarketing and uh, neuromarketing uh, refine. But uh, before I begin, uh, as uh, Tino had used this iPhone, I have got to use my BlackBerry. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 see uh, many of you being BlackBerry fans. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You don't know what you guys are missing, but. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Alright, so I'm here to talk to you about uh, neuro marketing refined. And uh, this is what is defined by uh, the advertised mind of the concept of uh, neuro marketing. So to put it very uh, uh, succinctly, what it's trying to suggest is in neuromarketing, it is all about how your subconscious mind makes buying decisions. Because you know, when you go into a supermarket, you've got all these things on the shelves, what makes you buy the things you buy? It is not just a conscious effort and a conscious way of thinking that makes you buy what you buy. Okay? So let's peer into the mind of um, Alison. <laughs> As, uh, she walks into a lingerie shop to buy a polka doctor. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now this is an actual brain scan um, and, uh, of someone who is um, uh, making a fair decision of what to buy. Okay. And you can see that uh, the uh, temporal lobes over here uh, lights up. You can see that the uh, emotional part of the brain here, the uh, chemical part of the brain, the limbic uh, hemisphere light up. Uh, you could also see the prefrontal uh, cortex light up. So these are the three key areas that uh, lights up when you're making a decision on fairness. <coughs> what, uh, what you buy. Now, um, so what most uh, consulting companies do when they do neuromarketing is uh, they get these uh, participants and subjects, put them through an MRI scan, SCT scan, PET scan, and several questions are asked or several images displayed. And as they make their preferences or their choice, uh, different parts of the brain lights up, these companies capture the images, analyze it, and make meaning out of it. Okay, so that's basically a neuromarketing as we know it today. But uh, let me introduce you to um, a pet project of mine. Uh, we are investing in some companies, and this is some technologies that uh, we're working on. Uh, but before that, just another bit of science. Uh, Dr. Roger Sperry in 81 uh, won a Nobel Prize. Uh, for his uh, research on split brain uh, theory. And he found that, uh, he found it once and for all uh, to be true that the left and the right brain functions in the world of its own. It's distinct, it's like North Pole and South Pole. All right, so since uh, quite a number of speakers have done exercises, let's do an exercise now. <laughs> okay, this is to prove that your left and your right brain um, functions in the world of its own. All right, so uh, the left hand, please show me uh, what looks like a rabbit. <laughs> Okay, and the right hand show me a gun. Okay. So the gun will chase the rabbit from right to left. And when it reaches the end, this will be your gun, and this will be your rabbit, and you chase it all the way to the end. Okay, ready, go. And go. Yes, and one more time. One more time. Okay, I see some of you doing that. Let's try the next one. Uh, please stand. Yeah, this exercise uh, sounds simple. It's called the one, two, three exercise. And what you need to do is, with the right hand raised, yeah, so this would be one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, you're getting a hang of it. That's great. Now the left hand will go one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, let's do it together. Now uh, everybody go. One, two, three. This is a very simple exercise. 
but it shows you one thing, which is the left and the right brain functions in a world of its own. Uh, if not for the corpus callosum that joins your two brains together and help you coordinate your movements plus your cerebellum, uh, you won't be able to do it. Okay. And this brings me to the point of what we call the loss of physiology of head organs. And what that means is uh, if you have two similar organs in the body, like your limbs, uh, your eyes, your ears, uh, your lungs, one tends to be more dominant than the other. It's a fact of nature. Uh, some of us would be ambidextrous, you know, both organs are as uh, dominant, but uh, this is a minority of us. So, uh, let's see, how many of you, your right hand is a stronger hand? Yeah, your left hand is a stronger hand? Okay, all right. Uh, how many of you, your right eye is the uh, stronger eye? Right eye. So, uh, left eye is the stronger eye. Uh, how many of you are cock eye? Okay, I see some at the back. Okay, just to prove to you which eye is, so, is your stronger eye, um, focus on the brain. Put a uh, triangle, kind of a shape, in front of you, or one feet apart. Two eyes open, make sure you see it right in the middle of your triangle. Okay, now close your left eye. Open it, close your right. Yeah, so the eye that sees the brain in the center of your triangle is your dominant eye. Some of you won't be able to see it. Uh, some of you won't be able to close your eyelids. That's something... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so whose right eye is the uh, master eye? Left? Ah. So if you know which eye is your master eye, there are implications, right? Right? What kind of implications are there? Okay, um, uh, not quite, but uh, for example, for a guy, if you see a pretty woman walk past, walk past him, you use a more dominant eye, right? <laughs> <laughs> guys, you know, in Singapore, uh, we go to national service, uh, we, we serve in the, uh, the army, you know, you naturally use your more dominant eye. Okay. So what I'm suggesting is this, that in neuroscience, uh, based on the theory of uh, pet organs, uh, if you know which part of your brain is uh, the more dominant part of your brain, uh, you then know why you make buying decisions the way you make. Uh, you make uh, uh, friendship decisions the way you make. You make communication decisions the way you make. It, right? So that helps to explain a lot about uh, how your brain works. So I'm actually simplifying quite a bit, but uh, essentially to tell you that uh, in the neuromarketing, uh, that's what they're trying to focus on, which is what is that thing that you're thinking about subconsciously that make you do what you do wrong, make you buy what you buy, right? So uh, there's a pet project that we're doing. Uh, we are researching on this new uh, neuromarketing tool. So let me give you a few insights about uh, what we've done. Uh, this is a uh, pseudo product, let's just call it a pet egg zapper. Now with this zapper, uh, if you zap it at your temporal lobes, uh, you'll be as smart as David Lynn. <laughs> so uh, who, who would like to, to buy this product? <laughs> so now if you are marketing this product, what do you do? You do your market research, right? Which is the traditional thing that uh, most companies do. They'll send out surveys, they'll ask people about uh, their opinions about the product, what color you like it to be, what packaging would you like it to be. Uh, but sadly, uh, in this day and age, things move so fast, loyalties are very difficult to get. By the time the uh, survey results arrive, it's passing. It may not be relevant anymore. So there is neuromarketing, which is uh, what makes people buy the things they buy subconsciously. Okay, uh, but most of it is consulting based. It is uh, you know hard data, lots of scanning involved. Very expensive. You know per scan is like a thousand bucks, US. And what if you were to combine it on a web platform, on the street? What would you get? Now, this is something that we are researching upon, so uh, it's not released yet, but uh, because uh, I've been invited by David very generously to present. Therefore, I'm telling you something that is not released yet, but it's going to be, and uh, I had to block up the uh, logos and so on. So, let's say, yes, that's right, I forgot to do that. Um, so, let's say you're launching the uh, pen example. Let's see if you <laughs> And uh, you want to know, okay, this product is catered primarily to males, uh, primarily in Southeast Asia, with a certain educational levels of this uh, 
uh, purchasing habits and this, these types of preferences and so on. Okay, you come out with your field. Uh, the system is able to tap into the data bank of uh, how people prefer to think and behave and provide you in uh, various types of reports, uh, such as uh, this, for example. And it's able to tell you, um, in this particular fields that you've selected, the majority of these people prefer to think in this way. And therefore, you can use that data to then uh, mine it even further and say, here is how we're going to package this product. Here's how we're going to sell it. Here are the marketing messages and so on. Okay. So I think uh, the future of uh, Minority Report is uh, coming very soon. If you have watched the movie, uh, you realize that uh, the uh, marketing is targeted not just to uh, groups, but these groups get smaller and smaller. And in the near future, uh, you'll be targeted at the individual as and when and where you go. Okay. So I think this is an idea worth uh, spreading. Oh, but uh, before that, uh, before I end, just, a, uh, uh, just to share with you some results of um, a trial project that uh, we just completed. Uh, we worked with a financial uh, company, uh, it's an investment company, and uh, we wanted to find out uh, how do their uh, clients make investment decisions. Based on uh, uh, neuroscience, what they say is this, that um, when it comes to investing, the left and the right brain is more or less even, it's balanced. Uh, the two areas that fire uh, when it comes to investments would be the uh, emotional part of the brain, the limbic area, and the uh, cognitive part of the brain, prefrontal cortex. Okay, so these are the two areas that uh, really fires when you're thinking about investment. And uh, again, they say it's fairly left and right uh, brain uh, even, it's a balance. But what we found in our research was uh, it's not that quite right. Uh, we ask this question, if you receive a large sum of money unexpectedly, what would you do? Okay. Of course, the research results are a lot deeper than this, but I've uh, made it into a very, very simple way to understand. Left, right brain, uh, that part of it. Okay. What we found was the right brainers prefer to save a significant portion of it. Now, what we know in neuroscience is the right part of the brain tends to be the more risk-taking uh, part of the brain. It's not uh, true here. And uh, the lab brainers say that, uh, and a large chunk of them say that they'll spend it on family and friends. Again, that is not what uh, we know of today as what neuroscience says. And finally, uh, the lab brainers will invest a significant portion on higher risk ventures as opposed to uh, the right. So again, I think uh, we're just in the beginning of uh, a lot of these uh, new uh, research that uh, is coming up uh, for, from uh, neuroscience and uh, neuromarketing. Okay, so I think this is a, this is an idea worth us spreading. Thank you.